Hello guys, welcome to the channel. In my last video, I did an open world introduction to Raccoon City using the free cam. I showed off many interesting things and I was actually pretty surprised at how well received that video was. I'm going to continue the series no matter how unpopular it gets or how popular it gets. I just really enjoy looking at the technical aspects behind the game. I'm sure anyone who watched that video saw how much length I went into, into finding all the specific little things things. But anyway, in this video, it's not going to be about Resident Evil 2, not even Resident Evil 8, or anything else. We're going to be talking about Resident Evil 3 and some of the top features that not just me, but the community themselves have been desiring for a while. Now I may strike a chord with some people with some of these suggestions, but I do hope you keep an open mind and you're willing to listen to these. Now unfortunately, I don't really want to show Resident Evil 3 footage in its retro style and all blurry and stealing somebody's content, so I'm just going to use some free cam content I have here, and it doesn't really matter, you can close your eyes anyway and still get the gist of this list, and that rhymed. So without any further delay, let's just get right into it. One last disclosure though, and that is this list is not in any particular order, I just want to make that apparent so that people don't think I'm choosing favoritism over features. I've randomized this list up just specifically for that, so I hope nobody can see any bias, it's just RNG at this point over some of the features that I think definitely need to be enhanced or make a return. So let's start out with the first one, which is more of an open world. Now if anyone played The Evil Within 2 and I'm sure many of you did, or even watched it, it had what I'll call a semi-open world. So it wasn't like a sandbox environment like Far Cry, Grand Theft Auto, or any of the plethora of Ubisoft games that exist in the current market. It was more of a linear open world, and again, anyone who plays it just kind of understands what I mean by that. They did go for kind of a unique one on this, like I've not seen a game pull off linear open world before as well. But yeah, The Evil Within 2 did a very unique take on it, and it's a very good example of how Raccoon City could actually expand. So if you remember in The Evil Within 2, we were limited because we were on basically floating islands and we had to travel to other floating islands, and this is how they started being completely open world. Whereas let's say in Raccoon City, if you're traveling through the streets and stuff, you know, you could just have a section like in Resident Evil 2, where half of the road's just out and you can't really progress beyond it, you could have alleyways on fire, car blockades stopping you from going past streets, and this could stop you from going out of bounds while also having a very large environment that doesn't just have one linear path to progress through. Now there's many streets in Resident Evil 2 that are unused, especially in the intro. I showed this in my last video, if you didn't see that I recommend it, and Capcom should definitely introduce a lot more of the outside in Resident Evil 3. I'm not exactly sure why they haven't before. Do they just think it would be boring? Do they think that many of us would just be like, hey, we're walking through the streets, it's not really any different from the other streets? Because to be honest, that's not how fans see the game. We just want to go through the streets, roleplay an actual survivor, and be like, holy shit, this is what it would be like in real life. That's all we want. Like, there's no magical formula to it. It's just really simple, and I really hope that we have more open world environments in Resident Evil 3's remake, and Capcom could do one hell of a job listening to the fans on this, because I do not seem to be alone, about 99% of the fan base desires this exact feature. The second thing that slightly disappointed me with Resident Evil 2's remake, it wasn't too much of a big thing, but it was kind of disappointing, was the lack of additional enemies. The only two enemies that I can remember that we didn't have in the original game were the IVs, and they were just basically a derivative of one of the original enemies, and then we had the G creatures, which, again... Yeah, it's a new creature, I guess, like the IVs in a way, but it is still a derivative of an original creature, so is it really? You know, I wanted to see some new stuff in Resident Evil 2, some new BOWs. I don't really care if the canon would have been changed up a little bit. I mean, look at Resident Evil 1 with the Lisa Trevor subplot. That completely changed the canon, added a bunch of new enemies and other things, so... Yeah, like, we, we can't really say that that's a good excuse. Like, Resident Evil 3 could do 
with having some additional enemies that weren't in the base game, maybe some additional subplots like Resident Evil 1, and I will say this by the way, Resident Evil 1 was literally the golden standard of what a remake should be, and I don't just mean that for Capcom, I mean that in the entire gaming industry. So if we could have some extra additional enemies, as well as subplots, or just even one big subplot in Resident Evil 3, that would also be hugely appreciated. We do love going back and playing these games, and yes, they do serve to allow a newer generation to play the games we knew and loved, but isn't it always better to have something extra in there as well? The only thing I can think of that was massively changed in Resident Evil 2 was the orphanage scene, which unfortunately if you look in free cam you can see it was supposed to be much more expensive, and then if you look at some of the other unfinished exterior environments, it really makes you wonder if Capcom was actually wanting to make Resident Evil 2 a little bit bigger, and I do hope Resident Evil 3 has this formula, more streets, more enemies, more subplots. Moral choices. Now, moral choices are something that aren't exactly Skyrim level in Resident Evil, but they have always been a part of the franchise, being able to choose different actions. For example, in the original Resident Evil game, you could kill off some of the main characters, even though it's clearly not canon, based on the decisions you made. And also, there were other variables in the game that could affect different things as well. And this was really interesting in my opinion. I liked it because it added a lot of retention to the game, in the way that you could play it in a very different way. It added a lot of different emotional connections to the characters and feelings. And also, it just really felt interesting being able to kill off some characters intentionally at certain points just because you played the game enough and you wanted to have a laugh. Now we're in 2019 however, and moral choices could make a much larger impact in the game, and also not just moral choices, but also actions the player must take. For example, you could choose to take Route A or Route B, and they would go in different directions and lead to completely different gameplays, and possibly even different story outcomes. Now I know Capcom hasn't really explored this concept too far, but I think it could make for something really cool. Imagine being able to do so many of these different things and progress very differently, but then also having a straight up canon. Because again, anyone who is an old Capcom fan will know you can finish the games in a variety of different ways, but there is kind of a general accepted canon behind all of it. So these additional pathways, these additional routes that you can take the game, they don't really affect the canon at all, it's more of what if scenarios and they're just fun to play through. I'm not sure about you, but I think this could be quite interesting and it would definitely add a lot of retention to the single player game. Please do let me know what you think about this one, because I think it's pretty interesting when a game lets you progress through it in different scenarios and with different outcomes. And this is exactly why I loved Mass Effect for example. Now let's go away from new features for a second and go back into the classic old Resident Evil 3, because many of you I'm sure will remember those freaky footsteps and noises and vocals that Nemesis made about the stars. He was an extremely horrifying enemy at the time, especially considering his health pool, armament and his general appearance. He was honestly one of the big, he was honestly at the time one of the most well known enemies up there with the aliens from that franchise, Predator, etc etc. Everybody knew who Nemesis was, and I'd like them to of course upgrade his appearance and things, but I'd like them to keep that very retro style of his footsteps being extremely scary and pronounced and atmospheric, and I really want to hear this line exactly replicated. Stars. Nemesis was one of the most iconic enemies for many gamers throughout the years, and even holds a high standard to this exact year. I would say his AI should be much more aggressive and he should be much more pronounced in Resident Evil 3's remake. I think Mr. X for example didn't follow you enough in the game 
and he should have been more of a pronounced feature, and Nemesis I hope can play this role specifically because he was one of the most terrifying things to face in a video game so far. Now this one's an interesting one because I'm not sure if many people would have thought about it, but I do hope Resident Evil 3's remake has some more additional and extra modes after you've completed the game, because Resident Evil 2's remake did disappoint me a little bit on this to be honest. You know, you don't have to just remake some of the classic modes such as Hunk, you could have added something extra such as a modern raid mode etc. This would have been extremely fun for the fans to play and I guess it's just a missed opportunity. In this day and age I really hope things like Project Resistance aren't extra modes that really should have just been in the original game because that's a little bit how I feel to be honest. And I just hope in Resident Evil 3's remake there's some more extra and additional modes that we can play through to increase the retention as well. I just want Capcom to remember that these are beloved projects on the level of Final Fantasy 7, Shenmue and other games that hold a close heart to many game fans. Remaking them has to have the utmost amount of perfection applied to it. Now Resident Evil 7 and Resident Evil 2 have many fantastic elements in them that make them absolute masterpieces in their own rights. They also do have many flaws and I'm going to highlight one of those flaws that I think everybody or at least most people should agree on especially if you are an old Resident Evil fan. And that would be puzzle complexity. There's no denying that over the years since the original franchise that the puzzles have been getting simpler to compensate for a casual player base. Resident Evil 5 for example had puzzles but they were so simple and easy to do that you could basically figure them out within 10 seconds of glancing at them. And this is in comparison to Resident Evil 1 where people were getting stuck for hours at a time. Now I don't think we need to make them so complex that they're just sophisticated beyond comprehension, but a little bit more complexity than a simple shadow puzzle or just moving a bookcase, which I mean even in the original Resident Evil 2 game, the little bookcase puzzle was actually a lot more difficult. I don't need difficult puzzles every three seconds, but one or two in the game would definitely make for an interesting change and twist. Now to top this list off, I'm going to say something that's more personal to me, but Jill is one of my favourite Resident Evil characters, and I've got to say, She's gone through a lot of appearance and voice changes over the series. I think everybody can also agree that they've made some pretty interesting reasoning as to why that is, such as a virus changing your hair colour for example. But I do believe that Resident Evil 3 may be the first appearance we have of Jill in a long time. I mean, by Resident Evil 8, she's going to be quite old. She's been in rehab for about 360 years and apparently is a vampire now that's immortal. So I'm not exactly sure how that's going to play out. But in Resident Evil 3, she's going to be quite young and much more of an amateur again. And I really do hope they nail the appearance down perfectly of the original Jill and also get her voice down correctly as well. Now, there isn't a possibility they're going to get the original voice actor due to the entire controversy that happened previously. I've got a video on that if you want to look it up. But I do hope they get a new voice actor that fits the role quite well. Because Jill has a very assertive voice, but it's also quite kind at the same time. It's a very hard accent to pull off. Now, if they can do that and get the appearance down, I'd be very, very happy. As I said, Jill's one of my favourite characters in the entire franchise. But I do have a little bit of faith in Capcom because Leon and Claire looked absolutely perfect. And also Sherry did as well. We've got William. Actually, actually you know what? Everybody just looked on point, to be honest. However, I'm going to ignore Resident Evil 7's Chris as just an anomaly because... Somebody really liked that guy or something, I don't know. But they did a great job in Resident Evil 2, so I do have faith. 
And yeah, these are some of the things that I really think need to be expanded upon and they need to make an appearance in Resident Evil 3. So I hope you have listened to all these points such as the expanded storylines, like the Lisa Trevor subplot, more Raccoon City in the open environment and I mean just traveling through the actual roads and the streets, maybe going, you know, onto one of the overpasses etc. This would be really fucking cool. All the other stuff as well. If you did enjoy this commentary, please leave a like, a sub subscribe, a $50 million donation on Patreon, but for now, I just hope you're having a beautiful day. As always, guys, keep it rocking, kill all those zombies, and peace.